All right, folks, welcome back to News One Now. TV One broadcasting live from Houston City Hall with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation uh, holding an economic summit here. Of course, Houston, as you our last segment, uh, still recovering from Hurricane Harvey, but there are also so many other issues uh, to deal with when we talk about what's happening with African Americans. Joining us right now is Houston Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, of course, uh, who is uh, running the foundation. Of course, the CEO is Shawnee Washington, but you always have a member who also is very much involved. So, Congresswoman. How you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you. So All right. Much. So you just brought it back in your hometown. Just hold the microphone there up. There we All go. Right. So, so back back in your city here. First and foremost, uh, why did you want to have uh, this economic summit here? Well, first of all, I've got to thank my board members. I chair the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, uh, and certainly the staff, as you indicated, the president and CEO is uh, Shanice Washington. Uh, we had wanted to come to Houston when I took over as chair of the foundation in the early part of 2017. We were not expecting, nor did uh, Hurricane Harvey give us a notice. Uh, but as you well know, I know my friends spoke about the fact uh, that Hurricane Harvey was the most significant uh, hurricane and flood on the continental United States, could fill 24,000 uh, astrodomes in terms of the amount of flooding. My, uh, my contemporaries, my colleagues said, let's still go to Houston. We had planned, we do these economic summits, this is number five, all over the country, from Atlanta to New York to Chicago uh, to uh, Silicon Valley, and we wanted to come to Houston, a southern western city. And the character of Houston, I think, would reflect the resilience of a strong African-American community, uh, but as well a strong business community, but a community with needs that still has those who are struggling. But little did we know, that we come to Houston in the backdrop of people still fighting to come back. 300,000 homes right mm -hmm. now are, in essence, underwater, multifamily and single family. Um, and of course, uh, we still have to fix those bios. And that's the fight that Houstonians are in, pushing uh, the President and the United States Congress to not nickel and dime us. And so we, as the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, wanted to come and emphasize the resilience the many minority businesses, access to capital, but we want to show that we are concerned as policymakers as to what we do next to have a long-term recovery, working with the mayor of the city and other local officials. Uh, who are some of the folks who are going to be speaking uh, later today? Last night there was a reception at Texas Southern University. Uh, Robert Smith, uh, of course, a uh, black billionaire, uh, spoke last night. Uh, and, and you also uh, had a number of other people who were there as well. And so uh, what are you going to be covering uh, with the summit today? Thank you. And uh, let me just emphasize that Robert Smith uh, in his uh, uh, description as the quiet billionaire was one of the strong supporters of helping us recover by donating and giving uh, to any number of nonprofits and coming down and, and really working during our time of need. But now we're coming to telling our story. Uh, we'll have Congressman uh, Mark Vesey. Of course, we had Congresswoman uh, Stacy Plaskett last night who did an, a, a brilliant assessment of the U.S. Virgin Islands, which she represents. Uh, another of our uh, impacted areas that we're fighting for, along with Puerto Rico, Florida, and of course, Louisiana. But today, uh, we're going to have uh, Courtney uh, Rose, uh, who's going to uh, be um, talking about uh, access to capital and what the Black Chamber is doing. Uh, Cheryl Cruzo, who has access to capital. Deaver Dargherty, uh, who has uh, lost everything. Amazing businesswoman, but she lost everything. Uh, and in losing everything, she still helped others. She has any number of employees, but she still kept going. Uh, we're going to uh, listen to uh, the uh, president and CEO of one of our energy companies, BP, uh, and that company is shut down today. But still, they were helping their employees. How do large businesses help their employees? And what's happening in the energy arena? And of course, we're very excited uh, that we're going to have the mayor of the city of Houston, Mayor Sylvester Turner, who is known around the nation for being uh, the successful hurricane recovery mayor. Let me just say this. I stayed in the shelter uh, from the moment uh, Hurricane Harvey came. This is a shelter that the mayor set up immediately. 14,000 people were at the George R. Brown Convention Center. I can venture to say if we did not have that shelter uh, and the immediacy of federal help at that time, um, we would have been in a more of a crisis. As we watched people come in with their pillows and their uh, plastic bags of their materials coming into that shelter. Uh, and that's where FEMA really stood up. 
Right now, we have to work because FEMA does not have the ability, I believe, uh, to work in the long-term recovery, and that's for the United States Congress to do. Let's fix FEMA so that they can work in the long-term recovery. And the other part of it is uh, we need the money. And it's, if the president has promised the money to all of these regions of Irma, Maria, uh, Nate, uh, and uh, Harvey, uh, we need to be able to not nickel and dime the recovery of these people. Uh, one of the things we talk about is, uh, I was just talking about, mm. uh, is building capacity. Mm. Houston has a significant uh, black business class. You also, of course, have uh, TSU, Texas Southern University, third largest uh, HBCU in America, just down the street, some 50 miles. You have Prairie View a and as well. Uh, and so, so you have uh, that, you know, that, that structure where folks are able to go to elementary school, middle school, high school, then go to college as well. Uh, and so what do you see as necessary to be able to build that capacity for black owned businesses where we are able to create wealth? That is the, uh, I think, singular question when you talk about recovery. And, and I believe it is a combination and a partnership uh, with the larger uh, private sector uh, and uh, we call it corporate America and our uh, largest uh, expender of dollars, and that's the federal government during this recovery. Um, certainly, uh, there is initial investment of dollars uh, through uh, the debris pickup and the immediate recovery that was needed uh, in terms of giving public assistance, uh, the disaster supplemental nutrition program. Those were all monies uh, going into the pockets of local citizens. But right now, uh, local businesses can be our life, uh, our lifeline. I'd like to see more of our large corporations, of which we are the fourth largest in the nation. We have a huge energy sector, but we have a medical sector, uh, and as well, a technology sector. Mm -hmm. Let's do uh, more uh, sharing and utilizing small businesses in the tech area, the finance area, uh, and as well, uh, the policy area. So more collaboration where they're getting more contracts. More uh, African Americans utilizing black businesses, they're everywhere. And they cross the spectrum from medicine to real estate uh, to uh, tech uh, and to finance. So using more businesses and again, a mindset of the federal government. For example, uh, I've introduced legislation, I hope we'll be able to get it in along with uh, a colleague of mine, a Republican colleague, that will establish a billion dollar fund for small business grants. Usually the SBA gives you loans. I know that if you're in the Hurricane Harvey or any Harvey, Harvey uh, any hurricane area that's been hit as a small business, as I've driven through uh, the city of Houston and seen mom and pop businesses from uh, tax preparers to barber shops to restaurants shut down because of the flood, I know that what they need to get on their feet is a grant to be able to open their doors mm -hmm. and then be able to build access to capital. So the federal government can be a partner, and I indicated, let's not give them a loan. Let's not burden them again with an SBA loan. They can get that maybe a couple of years down, but let's make sure that they have a grant that they can invest in uh, and do what is right. So um, that's where we're working here. And uh, if I might, uh, I need to give a shout out uh, to Alabama. I'm taking off my uh, Congressional Black Caucus Foundation chair hat. I just got off uh, the radio. Uh, speaking into Alabama, this is a historic moment, and it's historic tomorrow. And so I'm hoping if you've got any relatives in Alabama, Houstonians, if you've got any relatives, uh, get them out there because the vote is power. What a mighty change it could be to really help and have oversight. And my last point on that is we're coming into our 2018 elections, and we need election security. You need a change in Alabama. All right, then. Well, we certainly appreciate happy it. Happy Houston. I'm so glad to be with you. I'm no, so happy. Well, Thank you. Well, a Houstonian right here. Well, of course. That's right. Jack Yates High School. Jack Yates. Uh, glad to be here. Growing up in the Clinton Park area, so we, we certainly it. appreciate it. We love you. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much. Well, will, some, will the summit be live streamed? It will be live streamed. We're excited about that. Okay, and so, so we encourage folks can you to go to, to what, the CBC Foundation uh, website. Absolutely. And great speeches are going to be made, as I indicated. Um, we've got a, a, just a great panel of individuals coming for you to hear and learn, see, and do. All right, All Congresswoman right. Lee, we appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.